I now give the floor to Mr. Muhammad Saleh Anadif. You have the floor, sir. Mr. President, allow me to congratulate you on your role as President of the Security Council for the month of October. I would also like to let to take this opportunity to greet and congratulate the Ambassador of Russia for his presidency of the Council during the month of September. Mr. President. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, it's a great honor and uh, a pleasure for me to uh, once again uh, uh, present to you from Bamako the Secretary General's report on Mali covering the three last months the pursuant to paragraph 64 of resolution 2480. Uh, with your indulgence, I would also like to take this opportunity to uh, welcome the presence of Ambassador Issa permanent representative of Mali um, with the United Nations. Mr. President, the report that under your consideration uh, uh, is mm, being presented at a time uh, when uh, uh, latest developments from Mali are not very encouraging, in particular the horrific attacks on Bulkesi and Mondoro last week. Uh, as well as the death of just 48 hours ago of a blue helmet in Agelok and uh, the wounding of another one near Bandiagara. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, in spite of these uh, repeated attacks committed by the enemies of peace, uh, significant strides forward have been achieved in implementing the agreement in particular as far as the political and institutional reforms are concerned, uh, security and defense issues, as well as uh, matters of socioeconomic development, as mentioned in the report under your consideration. Now, among this, uh, these uh, uh, strides forward, I, I want to mention the uh, promulgation last July of the uh, a law on national reconciliation and uh, a law establishing the fundamental principles for the creation, organization, and control of uh, the economic development zone for the northern regions, which uh, uh, lays the groundwork for boosting economic development at the local level. Now, along the same lines, I think uh, uh, there's every reason to welcome the holding uh, from the 14th to the 16th of September in Bamako, a workshop that validated the terms of reference of the National Inclusive Dialogue and uh, the official uh, launch of this dialogue by the Prime Minister Bobo Sisse on the 16th of September. And on this point, uh, I would just like to note that the the main political and institutional re reforms envisioned by the agreement uh, uh, are duly uh, included in the, in the uh, validated terms of reference. Uh, so since yesterday, on the 7th of October, uh, discussions have begun at the local level, starting by the communes. They will take place on the 7th and 8th. Uh, this, these discussions will continue at the level of community fora on the 14th and 15th of October, and then at the level of the regions on 21st and 22nd of October. Uh, before uh, returning to the capital, Bamako, where a uh, debate at the national level will take place at the end of October, or at the latest, at the beginning of November, so I think that the, we can really congratulate the Malian political class and civil society for this very important step forward and launch an appeal towards the different political factions to take part in this debate in order to ensure a, a broad and truly inclusive participation in this process. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, 
The fact that the 38th session of the uh, Monitoring Committee of the Agreement, CSA, uh, was not held. It was scheduled to be held on the 17th of September in Kidal, but it, w it didn't take place. This created ill feeling among the signatories. This ill feeling was amplified by the announcement made by the government of its determination to rev revise certain provisions of the agreement uh, in the framework of the National Inclusive Dialogue. Now, in light of these developments, which c might be um, harmful, harmful to the smooth uh, implementation of the peace process. It is extremely important to uh, call on all uh, stakeholders to continue their dialogue in the, uh, in the spirit of the agreement, which is the only framework for a return to peace and stability in Mali. Now, the uh, strengthening of trust among the signatories is essential for the... Uh, holding of the next session of the CSA. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to uh, salute and congratulate Ambassador Ahmed Boutash, who after having chaired uh, with great skill the work of the CSA uh, for, uh, for almost five years, is about to uh, take on other duties uh, in the service of uh, his country, Algeria. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, now, as far as the defense and security pillar of the agreement, the uh, planning, uh, planned redeployment of 1,006 combatants from the Operational Coordination Mechanism, MOC, uh, are, they have now completely integ and, and their integration into the Malian Defense Forces is uh, underway. This uh, number will be further bolstered by 328 further combatants, uh, a unit that is being formed, and then 506 others. So the uh, overall numbers will be uh, 1,840. These uh, elements uh, from from different movements will be. Uh, uh, will be incorporated into units that are, have already been constituted and uh, redeployed in the northern regions as a core of the uh, Malian security and defense uh, forces uh, that have been reformed and reconstituted. The nomination of a permanent secretary of the National Security Council is a significant step forward and has been favorably uh, received by all uh, partners during the fifth session of the Strategic Committee on the reform of the security sector held on the 4th of October of this year. This uh, appointment will probably uh, facilitate the adoption of a national policy of defense and security, which is essential for the uh, coherent implementation of the reform of the security sector in Mali. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, now, uh, the activities of the uh, center for uh, center for crisis management uh, uh, and its political framework have been uh, launched and w uh, by doing this the government has uh, expressed its determination to improve the situation including by implementing its strategy for stabilizing the center of the country thanks to the efforts of the government uh, uh, along with those of MINUSMA, statistics have shown a significant drop in the number of attacks against civilians, as well as the number of civilians killed or wounded over the past three months. I think uh, it's important to uh, call for a greater presence of the uh, security and defense forces in the center of the country in coordination with the efforts of MINUSMA in fulfilling its mission of protecting civilians and combating impunity. Uh, now, again, um, in this framework on the 27th of September, MINUSMA organized a coordination meeting with the National Commission on Disarmament, Demobilization, and Reintegration in order to discuss the implementation of uh, the program of uh, community rehabilitation which uh, will be in charge of disarmament uh, and dismantlement of self-defense groups and vulnerable youth in particular in the central regions of the country the government expects this program to be launched uh, in the very near future the provisional uh, startup date is on the 11th of October, just in a few days, uh, in the presence of the Prime Minister. MINUSMA will uh, provide support to this operation, in particular in the area of disarmament, uh, biometric registration, raising awareness on human rights, 
protection of children, uh, HIV screening, AIDS, etc. But also, it will provide support by, in the framework of uh, uh, violent, communal violence reduction projects. Furthermore, the humanitarian situation in the center of the country continues to deteriorate. The cycle of violence has seen a, a new waves of, of IDPs, and their current number is 171,000. This is the highest number of IDPs since 2015. These uh, individuals um, in part live in uh, IDP camps or among host families uh, in very difficult conditions, which uh, only puts further pressure on humanitarian assistance due to lack of uh, predictable and regular financing, and in particular due to uh, uh, complicated humanitarian access in spite of uh, support from MINUSMA. The resumption of uh, state services, whether we're talking about security services, judiciary, social services, is essential in order uh, to have uh, the level of violence uh, uh, drop. Humanitarian personnel uh, has not been spared this kind of violence. At the end of September, two uh, vehicles of a UN agency were uh, stolen by armed men. Mr. President, uh, distinguished members of the Security Council, regarding cross-cutting issues such as protecting children, the platform, one of the signatories of the agreement, uh, submitted its plan of action against recruitment and the use of children on the 18th of September. Uh, now, in the on the topic of combating sexual violence, MINUSMA organized from the 24th to the 27th of September a workshop to draw up a plan of action following the signature on the 1st of March 2019 of a joint communique on sexual violence between the government and the United Nations. This draft plan of action is currently being uh, uh, revised, but it will need it will have to be signed by the end of this year. Uh, for implementation in 2020. And lastly, uh, in conformity with Resolution 2480, a workshop on the inclusion of women in the peace process is scheduled f to take place on the 25th of November. Uh, that workshop will focus on uh, determining and validating the modalities of this kind of inclusion, including uh, the setting up of a uh, women's observatory. MINUSMA UN Women, as well as donors, are ready to support these efforts of the government in, in holding this workshop. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Security Council, as you can see in the report of the Secretary General, there's no doubt that there is uh, there are a great deal of challenges. However, MINUSMA is determined to meet its obligations in close coordination with the Malian government, but also with international partners such as the Joint G5, uh, the G5 Sahel Joint Force Bar Operation Barkhane, as well as the mission of the European Union, that is, EUTM and EU Cap Sahel. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for your kind attention, as well as for your uh, unwavering support for Mali and for Minusma. Thank you very much. I thank Mr. Anadif for his briefing.